Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you this new year, 2022. Praise God. Listen, the year is already getting, getting in, in shape and it's been a good year. Praise God. And surely going to be a good year. Are you ready to call for your daily bread right now? Join me and believe with your heart that it will come and surely it will come. Say, Father, I believe and I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we honor you today for this broadcast. Thank you for your truth that is coming to us freely. Freely you give to us, Lord. And freely we receive and release to others. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I declare burdens are lifted right now. Yokes are destroyed from everyone watching and listening. In Jesus' mighty name. The burden of six years is being taken off right now. Yes, that burden of six years is being taken off. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, now let me just give you this announcement. Today is Wednesday. Now, every Wednesday, the Lord has commanded that we pray for our nation. Every Wednesday now, we're going to be having a meeting beginning from 8 a.m. today. And that meeting is going to run till 12 noon. We are going to be praying, interceding, and receiving direction for our nation. Listen to me. God is taking charge. <laughs> he is taking charge. And the sons of God are rising to their responsibility. So we're going to be praying. If you can join us for that meeting, please do join us. We're going to start in a few minutes time. It's a.m. today. And every Wednesday, if you can join us online or if you can join us on site, the address is on your screen. Come join us. Let us intercede. If you are an intercessor, this is your time. If God has put the, 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 the thoughts of this nation in your heart, this is your time. This is your time. We're going to be praying in such clear and accurate knowledge concerning our nation. Because we're going to be trusting the Spirit of God for words. And He will give us. He will give us. And we will see how this nation will be directed into God's purpose. I believe so strongly for the Lord to call for the prayer. Now, there's a difference when you, you call people and say, look, we're tired, we're tired, let's pray. And then you begin to approach God and, and begin to pray and intercede. There's a difference when God says, son, I want you to set this time and begin to pray for your nation. Now, what does that mean? It means he is ready. He is set to do what he wants to do. Praise God. So every Wednesday, we're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing this. And trust me, you would see the movement of God in our nation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now, I was sharing with you how, how to walk in 2022. You must please the Lord. You must please the Lord. So make up your mind right now, if you haven't already. 2022, I will please. Now, there's a difference between pleasing your pastor and pleasing God. There's a difference between, now, of course, if you please God, your pastor will eventually be pleased. If he's a good pastor, praise God. Yeah. But you may please your pastor, you may please your church, and God is not pleased. Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must, he used the word must, this is a may, this is a try to, he said must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's how God wants to be worshipped, in spirit and in truth. Now what does it mean in spirit and in truth? The worship must be inspired by the Holy Spirit. So worshiping in spirit is not... No, 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 no. That's nonsense. <laughs> no. To worship God in spirit, you know, sometimes say, you know, say Let, let's, bring it. let's be in the spirit, let's be in the spirit, let's be in the spirit. And everyone's going, mm. Mm. <laughs> You're not in the spirit that way. Praise God. <laughs> to be in the spirit simply means to yield to the spirit of God. And you don't yield it by physically doing like this. No. 
You switch your mind. Lord, what, 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 what's your thought? What I say? So you want to pray and you pray in the spirit. You go on your knees and say, Lord, I want to pray concerning this. Can you please give me your trance? Can you give me your trance? Because I want to pray by the spirit. And then he says, in spirit and in truth. Now, you can't. So when you pray in the spirit, you'll be praying in truth. You know what truth means? Truth means you align your mind. Because you that is praying, you have to play, pray from the place of truth. So you align your mind to what the spirit is saying. Not the spirit is telling you one thing and you disagree with the spirit. And then you're still praying. When you pray, Lord, what, what, what would you have me pray? Or how do you want me to pray concerning this? And the Spirit of God begins to give you utterance. Sometimes in tongues, sometimes in your understanding. And when He begins to give you utterance, you be, sometimes you start in other tongues and begin to pray. But when you're praying in tongues, your mind is on one thing. Holy Spirit, give me the right utterance for this mission. And as soon it begins to come into your mind, pray like this. Command this. Say this. Now when it comes like that, you just yield yourself to the Holy Spirit completely and say yes. And when you are done praying that prayer, don't go and say, ah, I don't understand though. When I was praying, this is what the Holy Spirit told me. But hey, if that is what God wants, I don't know. No, 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 no. The moment you know what the mind of the Spirit is, you key into it. Say, that's what God wants. So you, you begin to walk in truth. If that's what God is saying, then that's where I stand. And it's so easy to know the mind of God. The reason you don't know it is because you're not paying attention to know. He's, you think, you think God, now, now think about it. God has finished his work concerning this year already. He's finished it. Concerning, in fact, he, he so finished the work that he's resting. <laughs> the work of your life is finished. He's, fi he's not doing any work to do. He's so finished. He's sitting down resting. Why is he resting? He's waiting for you to come to the finished work. And now how do you come to the finished work? The only way is by faith. And that's when you yield yourself to the Spirit of God for guidance. The Holy Spirit begins to lead you step by step you wake up every day the first thought in your mind is lord you know i'm with you i'm not walking alone i'm on your side just like you're on my side so lord what would you have me do today that's all i want to do hallelujah when you begin to pray and, and release thoughts like this then guess what you begin to know what it means to walk accuracy with the lord you begin to know. You want to take an action. Immediately you begin to sense in your spirit. That's not the action to take. That's not the way to go. And then you pause and say, Lord, you know I want to walk accurately with you. So Lord, I'm sensing I shouldn't go that way. So what would you have me do? Because the Holy Spirit is going to help you. When God commands you to do something, he doesn't leave you to go and figure it out yourself. No, the moment God commands you to do something, his spirit enters into you. To bring the reality of that thing. So the challenge most times is you yielding to the Spirit of God for that purpose. Every prophecy God gives you, I was sharing this on Monday. If God tells you, oh, you're going to build your house this year. Goody. But how are you going to build it? He's not sending you to go and start struggling to raise money. You see people say, God, I've given me a command that I must build my house this year. Ah, I'm not resting. No. I must build my house this year. I must. Now, he gave you a prophecy. And many, many times, see, people don't understand the speaking of God. They don't understand his speech. So God says, you will build your house this year. He's not saying, Go and build your house this year. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm warning you, go and build your house. So if you don't build your house, you know, that's how some people hear him. That, like God is saying, if you don't build your house this year, you'll be in trouble. I'm watching you. That's how some people hear God. But see, that's not how God spoke. You see, that's why I'm telling you, yes, I told you yesterday and two days ago, that you must clear the graving image of your heart. You must clear it. Every wrong representation of God in your heart must go. It must go. 
You may have met with the wrong people and fellowship with the wrong people and they have given you a wrong perspective of God. And so you feel God is just this, you know, hard, the one who drives us hard. So even when God speaks to you out of love, all you hear is a harsh voice and telling you, hey, if you don't do this, you will die. That's not how God speaks. It is your mind. It is your mind that accepted his word like that. So when God says, you build your house this year, it's a prophecy. It's a prophecy. So what do you do? Okay, Lord, thank you. You said, I'll build my house this year. Lord, I'm ready. I will yield to your spirit and that word will come to pass. And go about your normal duty. Just, just live free. Be conscious of his word. But note this. He is not telling you to enter into a 21 days fast. You know some people just, when God say you build, they say, ah, ah. God just say you build your house this year. And the next thing you, you're hearing them speak. Now I'm a pastor, so I know what I'm talking about. So you're hearing them communicate what God told them. He said, ah, pastor, you know, God told me to say that I'll build my house. But pastor, you know what? I know that those demons in my village, they will not allow me to build there. So I'm entering a 21 days fast. This prophecy must be fulfilled. Now, now, you see, that attitude, that attitude is what would make the prophecy not to be fulfilled. Because now you think it's by might and by power. And so you, you now want to build that house and, and say, I, I, I have built the house. No, no. Be at ease. Carry his word in your heart. Keep it. The Lord said, I'll build my house. This is so. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. What's going to happen? One week later, crossed my mind. Yeah, the Lord said, I'll build your house. This is Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Now, soon, one day, maybe you don't even have a land. One day, You'll be doing your stuff and then the Lord will just speak to you and says, go get the land. Now, this is it. The moment the Lord says, go get the land, it means the land is available and is not far away from where you are. So, so what do I do? I don't even know where to check for the land. Relax. There must have been, before he tells you, go get the land, there must have been someone that you have met recently that spoke to you about land. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when the Lord says, go get a land, and, and, and why you're like, okay, maybe someone have gone to show you land before. I mean, recently, or sometime back, and then you just find anything you think about land, that's where your mind goes to. Now when God says, go get the land, go to that place. Or call that person that spoke to you about land recently. And he called the person and said, come, um, I'm looking for a land. And you, 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 you see, I'm telling you, the, the, the moment you say that, now if, it's, if that's the person that the Lord has ordained, you, you say, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a land. I say, ah, you called me at the right time. You called me at the right Where are you? Come, let me go and show you one land somebody just gave me yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. And then you go there and, and see it. Now, when you see it, you, you, you monitor your spirit. Is there a click in your heart concerning that land? You just see it like, oh, this is it. Once there's that click, that it doesn't matter whether you have the money or you don't have the money. Tell the person, okay, how much is it going for? Negotiate whatever you can negotiate. That's a favor of God. And he said, okay, all right, um, I'll get back to you. He said, when will you get back to me? So give me three days or give me one week. I'll get back to you. Now, it is God that says, go look for the land, not you. So what do you do? Go back to him and bring the report, Father. Thank you. You asked me to go look for a land. I have seen the land. And this is the cost of the land. Oh, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. I'm so excited. And relax. So what do you do next? Nothing. Relax. Go about your normal duty. And guess what? About that same time, an opportunity is going to come that you will receive money. However it comes. Whether someone calls you and says, God said I should give you this money and it's equivalent to buying the land. Or whether someone will tell you, oh, come, there's this business I want us to do together. And hey, they are paying us up front. So this is it. Say, whoa, okay, good. And that's the money you get. It's for the, he's not sending to go borrow from the bank. No, 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 no. Don't spoil the miracle. Don't spoil the testimony. 
And then you go and you pay now. You've gotten it. So what do I do next? Relax. Relax. <laughs> Time is up. I'm going to continue tomorrow. Listen, this year, you will make tremendous... I'm going to be so practical with God's word with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive your faith now. In Jesus' name.